almost felt like we could see this coming from the very beginning of the start when Peyton got the job and he came out and he talked about the things that everybody was reporting that Russ had in the building. Uh -huh. And when Peyton gets hired, he's getting hired because of all the success, the prior success he's had of winning a Super Bowl champion, the success he's had with offense. So you know when he shows up, he didn't handpick Russ to be his quarterback. So no matter how the season went, at the end of it, you're going to evaluate and he was going to have to decide whether Russ was going to be the quarterback of the future. Now, the way we looked at Russ's season all year long was it was much improved from a year ago and you look at the numbers and this that and the third and there's a few interceptions less than 10 20 something touchdowns you're like well Russ is playing well I think for Peyton and them you're looking at in the execution of whatever the plan was going to be just wasn't it but it's amazing as you look at the season it was a few weeks ago where he gives Russ a bump on the sideline and you're like wow Everything is clicking in Denver. You can see the smiles. Yeah. You can see the relationship as they were playing the Chargers. And then you see him screaming at him about a week or two later. So it's hard to envision. I, I, you look at the season and somebody had to be the scapegoat. And I felt like at the end of the year, if they weren't where they needed to be, it was going to be Russell Wilson. And that, to me, is what's happening. Yeah, and look, he inherited him. I know this, is, this was a bombshell yesterday. But, it, you know, Russ went the whole season. Played, was healthy, had 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions. I don't think Russ was bad this year. I don't think Russ was bad at all. I think for the money that Russ is making, that wasn't something that they can keep on the books. And in what Tom Pelissero so eloquently de detailed is you've got $37 million guaranteed if he gets hurt over the next two weeks that they have to pay next year. That money goes away if they just cut him at the end of the year. So I think it's a financial decision. They'll use that money to go to another quarterback or to build their roster a different way. He's still is getting $39 million guaranteed from the Broncos, so don't cry for Russ too much. But I could see him feeling blindsided by this. There's not much more he could have done this season. I thought he was fine. And from the Broncos' side, they said, okay, well, Russ had a really good season. 26 touchdowns, interceptions, was great in the fourth quarter, was great in the red zone, and we're still a losing team. So where are we going here? What, what is the future with Russell Wilson? Is he going to get better than this? I'm not sure. Now, the dynamics between the two, I'm sure more will come out in the coming weeks. I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll hear a lot over the offseason. They kept it under wraps for the year and then finally had that blow up on that Saturday night. I think that revealed a lot of stuff. Yeah, listen, Russ has kept his mouth shut all year. He's been quiet. He's been low profile. He's been workmanlike. He shows up to work. He, he does the best he can. He's played better. They won some games. It felt like they turned it around. We fixed this. They're going to the playoffs. Poof. I don't think Peyton wants to work with him. I, I, Sean Peyton's running the show there, especially when you look at the paycheck. Peyton's sitting there being like, he's okay. He's not that good. I've had better. I will have better. He's very expensive. I don't think we're clicking that much. You want me here? I, I don't think I, I don't want to play with Russ anymore. I think we got to get rid of him. It's I think it's as simple as that. It's been his show since he showed up. Russell Wilson the year before was running the organization. It felt like Peyton showed up, and I'm the new sheriff in town. And I, I feel like it was as simple as a couple conversations among the high-ranking people at the Broncos. It's like, no, I'm not doing it. And also, he's going to grill us if he gets hurt the last couple of years. What I'm the next last couple of games. What I'm fascinated by is so Jared Sidham starts. Russell Wilson is the backup. He's the only roster on the team. What if Jared Stidham gets hurt on yeah. the second series of the game? Russ goes in, and then you're looking at the nightmare scenario. Or what if in the last game, do they have to sign another quarterback to bring in if Stidham can't go just to not play Russ? Do they have to sign two? It's a mess. And there's two, there's eight quarters of football left to play, in which Russ could potentially get on the field. I don't know what that's about. But I think Peyton said enough's enough. I've been here a year. I know football, and I, we need a new guy, and it's too expensive, and it's as simple as that. It's a weird turn, and the strangest thing is, like, I don't know what Russ's next chapter that's, that's is. What What's the market yeah. for Russ? I don't know if there's any trade you're like market. A, if you're Atlanta, and they cut him, and they say, okay, if you're Atlanta, are you like right away, like, I'm in? If you're Washington, are you like, I'm in? I, I don't know. And will he yeah. play for a normal salary or does he have to play at one of the because he's right. a guy that's always made mm -hmm. big money mm -hmm. right it's curious I, I want to go back all the way to when this initial the the extension was first signed in Denver you don't think Sean Payton Peter takes this job without having full control of I don't care what that contract was I don't care what money you committed to this man I get to decide what the future is here I would assume that conversation existed right absolutely yeah. he inherited Russ and they didn't have a relationship beyond coaching him in the Pro Bowl and a connection through Drew Brees so he was willing to give it a shot he yeah. did um, I don't think it, this is going to go down as like one of the great quarterback, you know, coach combos of all time. I also don't think it was a total bust. Like mm. they were, they had their moment this year. It just wasn't good enough. And yeah. also for 
Russ's future, but even the Broncos' future, like who's now the quarterback moving forward? Do you keep it as Stidham? They don't have a high round, a high draft pick in the first round. So even moving forward, we watch McDaniels get rid of Carr and then how all that transpired this year of who the other guys Mm -hmm. were. So I'm intrigued to see kind of where Sean Payton and I'm already thinking of all of Sean's guys. He's a Teddy Bridgewater guy. You know, like all these guys. He's done. He's done. And then he's had Jameis. Like, is he one of, or does he say, let's go trade up and let's go get him? Right, right, right. This is also a time I like to watch the Broncos play. Twitter and like See, anybody got something to say? Anybody yeah, not like this? RG3 did a whole you know RG3 yeah, monologue about how you know Russ was destroyed and how this sure. is not fair. And Chris Harris, who's a longtime yeah. Bronco, so they came back and was like, Peyton gave Russ the full season and he got the best yeah. out of him. I think yeah. we're done with the Russ. Mm. Also, be like, interesting to see what Rich Sherman says tonight. Richard yeah. Sherman has a lot of insight yeah. and thoughts on Russell Wilson, and he'll be, maybe they'll team him up. Well, he does. Go get him, right? Sure. All right. 